Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to cover part two of Agent Assist. There didn't need to be a part two, but on part one, I didn't click on any of the cards in Agent Assist, and I think that's an essential part of the demo. So let's take a look at what's going on with Agent Assist. Once you've got them populated um, on the left, or the right hand side, sorry, um, so you see them here. This is uh, defaulting to the catalog items that I showed in my previous video. There'll be a link up above to uh, look at the first video or part one. But when you click on these, so I've got catalog items. If I click on a catalog item, it's going to show me the catalog item in agent or service operations workspace. And if I want to order that or mark it as helpful, right, give the system feedback about this particular recommendation, or not recommendation, this particular agent assist item, I can do that. So if I order it, it will take me to the catalog and actually complete the order um, and whatever information needs to be filled out for that order, right? So there may have been questions. You can see here, um, we can add an attachment. Uh, my head is almost in the way. Go the other way. <laughs> um, so that, that takes care of the catalog item part. If we wanted to mark this as helpful, we just have told the system that it was helpful and we can unmark it, mark it as not helpful there. Um, if we were looking at knowledge articles, um, it will actually show us the knowledge article so I can click on it. I can review that knowledge article within the service operations workspace and have everything I need. Um, I can attach it to the actual ticket that I'm working on, right? So this feature has been here for a while. And once I attach it, I can choose whether to put in some additional comments um, that might be visible to the customer and attach it, associate it with the ticket, and then the customer, the user, whoever, will receive that and know that this is a knowledge article that might help them. I can also flag the knowledge article and say, hey, there's, you know, there's nonsense in here or it's not accurate, it needs to be updated, stuff like that. I can open it up to full view and then I, again, I can mark this particular search result as helpful or not. If we switch into one of the, um, what I said, level two in the previous video, so, or previous video, if we look at similar incidents and we found that there was one that was, I think it was just one that we found was similar to the incident that we're actually looking at, I should be able to interact with that incident as well. Um, waiting for it to come up over here. There it goes. Um, so sudden power off and my options here are to look at this incident in full view, which will open a new tab. So I can take a look at the, all the incident details for that one that was similar. So without having to leave the incident that I was working on, right, it's in a different tab. The other option I have is to link it to this incident. And uh, I'm not sure what the difference is there between the two, but we won't actually click on these. So I don't need to link them. And then again, mark them as helpful or not. Let's take a look at one more. We had some different stuff that are here around problems and outages. Um, didn't find any similar outages or problems. Let's uh, take a look at uh, one, one more. Let's see if there's any changes um, that match that. Okay, yeah, so we've got changes that match this particular one. So if we wanted to do something with that, we could open up into a full view. We could link it to this particular incident. So that's the rest of Agent Assist that I regretfully left out of the first video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.